everyone. This is George Crows with a solo episode of the Innovators Mindset Podcast. I've been kind of thinking about, I've been doing a lot of interviews. Really awesome, really excited to do this. But I also think there's a time and place for me to just kind of share some of my thoughts just independently in isolation. Not only because I hope that it help someone out there they think differently maybe challenges some thinking maybe reaffirm some things that's really important to me but also that it helps push my own learning that it helps me grow and this is one of the things i truly love about social media uh, how we connect with each other and i'm going to talk today about this idea of the three consolidated c's for learning this is a newsletter i uh, shared recently i'll actually share it in link d- down below i i like kind of writing for an audience, but I also like digging into it, sharing some thoughts verbally and seeing if I stray away from what I originally wrote. So I do have the newsletter in front of me. I'm going to look at it. But one of the reasons I want to do this is because I think there's a real power in the ability to share our learning openly with everyone. I think it's really important to do, especially in the field of education where we're trying to grow, not just show the finished product, but the process of learning. And one of the things that I've been reading recently, and this is one of the reasons I I think it's important to model this, is Jonathan Haidt's new book, The Anxious Generation. I think it's a really important book, really is challenging some of my thinking. One of the things he talks about, and it's kind of the theme of the book, is basically kids should not be using phones at a certain age, uh, until a certain age. Um, They shouldn't be, I think, using social media until 16. And he's calling for basically outright bans in schools on devices. And I'm kind of a gray in this. I I can see um, the opportunities when you take away these things from students to focus on school, but I don't know if it really prepares kids for the world we live in. And the thing that I'm kind of thinking about, and I'm gonna dive more, there's gonna be an epic book review coming up on this at some point, is we constantly talk about kids who don't know how to use these things. But I also think, what do the adults really know what they're doing? Are we actually modeling this? Are we talking about this? And the fascinating thing, the reason I know about this book is because I see adults constantly sharing it on social media. It's blowing up. I guarantee you it's sold thousands and thousands of copies because of the willingness to share it on social media so there is a huge benefit of this and i think part of the reason i'm struggling with some of these things is because i have benefited from the ability to connect i've opened up doors for myself i didn't even know existed and can we intentionally teach our kids to do this so i'm not really saying one way or the other and i think a lot of times the reason books really gain traction is because they take an extreme view They go to one side of the spectrum. And I've never been just indiscriminately let kids use devices, don't even think about it. I've always been about the idea of really kind to use these in meaningful ways and how we do this. And I don't think we can effectively teach students how to do this unless we do it ourselves, which is one of the reasons I I, I do like posting this. And, you know, I'm sure someone can challenge me on some of the things I'm saying. And please do. I think it's really important to do this i understand you know if you're trying to teach school the way it was taught to me in the 80s and then you insert a phone into the environment it's it's going to be impossible right and you can see this with many adults they wouldn't they would have trouble with it as well so i think it's trying to figure out how do we best move forward to prepare our kids not only for the future but for right now how are you how are we utilizing these things in meaningful ways and maybe there's there's no possibility for this. And I think it's not about an all or nothing strategy. It's kind of finding that middle space. So the reason I wanted to read that book, and I, like I said, I'll talk more about it in the future, is to really kind of understand different viewpoints and and sharing these things, which kind of ties in today's three consolidated C's uh, to consider for learning. And, um, you know, there's like the five C's, the seven C's, there's all these C's, right? Like the letter C, not, you know, the red C, Mediterranean C, and all that stuff, Okay. So I've seen those things and I think they're really important, but I kind of think that, first of all, everything in education probably doesn't start with the letter C. Just saying, right? Sometimes it's just a catchy thing. We love our acronyms. We love our letters. But for some reason, 
I was just in the gym working out and I started thinking about the C's and what they're at. And I'm going to share kind of what I think we could kind of look at for the three C's, but it's kind of an ever expanding thing and sharing this. And when I look at the Michael Fullen C's and I shared this in the newsletter, you can see it in the link down below. Um, he talks about these things, communication, collaboration, creativity and innovation, critical thinking, critical thinking and problem solving, community and citizenship, compassion and character. All important, all important. But here, what I'm trying to do is not tell you, do these um, set, sorry, he's got 60s, I think. So it's between four to seven, de depending on who you ask, or which C's are the most important. Um, I kind of tried to synthesize these, but maybe go in a little bit different direction as well. And so the first C that I'm going to share is this one. And uh, I read an article from Will Richardson, again, shared in the newsletter, check it out there. And it is curiosity. Curiosity is my first C here. Maybe I should do like a little curiosity. Fair <laughs> horn for the first C. Um, he, Will Richardson wrote an article years ago, and it's probably one of my favorites over the last, you know, 10, 15 years. He writes this article titled Curiosity is the Cat. And I shared a quote from the article, and you can see it on the screen above if you're watching this on YouTube. Um, he says this, I mean, really, when it comes to learning, what comes before curiosity? Think of most skills, all the stuff that doesn't show up on the report card, all the stuff that probably matters more than the stuff that shows up on the report card, and you'll find they are steeped in curiosity. Problem solving, problem finding, persistence, cooperation, adaptability, initiative, add your 200 more here. Which of these doesn't require being curious first and foremost? Can you be any of that if you're not? And that is that quote again from Will Richardson. And that is something that really matters to me, that curiosity will stoke our willingness to learn, that we are excited about some information, things to share. I was thinking about this, um, you know, curiosity, learning, and um, for me, I'm currently, and I've mentioned this before, learning to play the piano. What stokes my curiosity in playing the piano is figuring out patterns. It's not just playing the song. It's like, is there a repeating pattern here? And what, like, what little changes are made through this, this process? One of the things that I noticed, have you ever seen the movie La La Land? And it's one of my favorite movies. I'm trying to learn every song from La La Land. And what's interesting is they play these separate songs throughout. And then at the end of the movie, they have a montage with all the songs together. And what I've noticed as I'm playing these songs, they all have very similar keys. And was that intentional throughout the, sh the movie so that they could do the montage? Was it like they had to be in a certain key? I don't know enough about music, but... It's not just about me playing the piano. I'm really kind of dig deep and trying to understand why are those songs, why are they different yet similar? Was it for that montage? Maybe you can answer that below someone who knows more music than me. So I think when we look at curiosity, it stokes us to want to learn more, to grow. And that's something that is so important. If you do not develop students who are curious, then when they leave school, why would they learn? Why would they learn without you? And one of the quotes that I shared in Innovator's Mindset is if students leave school less curious than when they have started, we have failed them. And I, and I believe this to be true. The other thing I, I want you to really think about, especially in the year 2024, there's a little, lot of political conversations, uh, obviously, especially in the United States, is curiosity should not be limited to information, but for understanding other people. When I actually um, listen or have conversations on political topics, and I typically have those offline, sometimes when I don't agree with someone's position or statement, instead of just saying what I believe and going from my viewpoint, I ask them questions, try to get her to better understand their perspective, to understand why do they think the way that they do. And oftentimes when you ask questions, you have a better understanding. And it's that kind of that idea of seek first to understand before being understood. We need curiosity in our society more than other, as opposed to assuming a person thinks the way they do because they're wrong, because they're stupid, because they're idiots. Maybe it's saying, having the curiosity, like, what, am, where did I lose my way? Where am I wrong? And actually having that will have a, a better understanding. And I remember reading a quote that I think is really powerful. 
sometimes when you're actually making a point or you're getting into a debate or a conversation, the best way to kind of move people forward is to actually be able to state their viewpoint from your perspective and actually they know you understand it. And if you don't understand someone's perspective, then you'll actually never be able to grow. It's one of the reasons I actually am really digging into Jonathan Haidt's book because I have seen a lot of the posts, a lot of things that are shared, and I don't necessarily agree with them, but I'm not gonna just disagree with a snippet or a quote. I wanna actually understand the book, the perspective, and go deep into it. So do you read books? Do you read articles? Do you read things from other people that you don't agree with? Or do you just actually read what you already agree with to make yourself feel better. And I think if you wanna feel better, then you have to have a well-rounded understanding of others, even when you don't agree with them. And that is curiosity. It's not just curiosity for um, information, but curiosity for others. I think that is a, the best way to move forward as a society. That's just an aside. The number two C is connection. And uh, I actually talked about three so it's kind of like I'm cheating a little bit here because I'm like, oh, this is one C, but there's actually three parts to it. So did I make five C's? But it's just kind of maybe thinking about this different. And I actually very distinctly didn't want to use the term collaboration. And I'll explain in a moment why that matters. So the first one is connection with content. One of the things when you look at, for example, your curriculum, your understanding, um, not every kid's gonna be good at science. Not every kid's gonna be good at math, nor do they have to be. I don't think every kid has to be good at every single, single thing we teach in schools. I think every kid should be able to actually figure out what they're good at in our schools. And it doesn't mean that they'll all be scientists, mathematicians, and that's okay. Writers, athletes, whatever. So really kind of that connection with content. And I actually shared this idea on years ago on why all learning is personal. And I, I shared three points. Each of ind individual has their own experiences and acquired knowledge. Each person creates their own connections to content based on the reason mentioned above. What interests each, each person biases what they're interested in learning moving forward. So that, that idea of really kind of having a connection with content, seeing yourself in that space, what matters to you, how do you actually maybe share your learning in different ways? So for example, one way that I might share my learning here is through writing and one way might be through um, a podcast. Is there something I'm interested in? Let's say you have a student who's really good um, with creating videos, but not so great at science. Could you actually get them to create a video and to explain the science concept where they actually have a connection to something that they're really interested in to tie it into something they are expected to learn you know, in school? So the connection with content matters. Um, the second one is connection with others. And I, I talked about this because we often talk about collaboration. There is a wonderful opportunity in our lives today where we connect with people all over the world, but also connect with people across the hall. And I think this is actually one of the, one of the things I'm reading in Heights book right now is we have actually kind of lost touch with people across the hall in our local communities. And we'll sometimes ignore the person in front of us to talk to a person across the world on a phone. And I think that it shouldn't be one or the other, but we have to learn how to do both. One of the things I'm really thoughtful of is my notifications on my phone. No notifications ever come off my phone, ever. Not during certain times, not during wherever ever I turn it off all the time and one of the things that I will tell you irritates me is when I'm spending time with someone and their notifications are going off nonstop, and it's like interrupting the conversation it's giving the one reason I turn off the notification on my phone is it gives me anxiety and now it's like being around someone their notifications are giving me anxiety whether no matter how they deal with it or not we have to kind of figure out how to do both. That connection and collaboration is so crucial to people across the world, but do not forsake this for people, you know, in our own communities, in our own schools. We often say like, oh, you can't be a prophet in your own land. And we covet people that are far away, but we need to really appreciate those around us. The third one point that I make from this idea of connection, I think is one of the things that's really missing in the full in list that I shared is connection with self. 
I struggle with the idea that we're always collaborating, we're always working together. But what do we bring to the table if we have no time to actually connect with our own thinking, with our own selves? Me just talking to you right now, I know it kind of feels collaborative because anyone can see this, but I'm just talking to a camera, just kind of letting my thoughts. I have no script. I just have some notes that I've written. You know, I'm reading off of my um, email that is all shared with you. And this is a way for me to really understand my own thinking. One of the uh, ideas I share often is this idea of brain writing, not actually having people turn and have conversations with each other on any topic without actually having some time to process their own thinking first. Because typically some people dominate those conversations, not because they're the smartest people, but because they have really quick brain processing time. Some people just need more time to think. And it doesn't mean that they're less intelligent or they're lacking something. They just process in a different way. And so as much as we talk about the importance of connecting with others, you can't really effectively do that unless you connect with yourself. And I think that's something that we need to spend more time focusing on. Um, this is a quote I shared in the email. And I, I, I apologize, it's Elena Bajic, B-A-J-I-C. Uh, Meet less, think more, draw inspiration from your days, little moments. This is one of the things I'm trying to do right now. And so the last one, the first two C's I'll list them again are curiosity and connection. And the third one is creation. The, I was really kind of reluctant about this because I wanted to use this word creation because I think consumption is really, really crucial. Uh, I remember John Medina, I saw him speaking and I, I kind of just, this is from memory. So I attribute to him, but I'm not, it's not the exact quote. But he said something like this. He said, creation without meaningful consumption is the equivalent of playing the air guitar. You might know the motions, but you don't know how to actually play. And I thought it was such a beautiful idea. We talk about our kids and our students creating continuously, really trying to push their own learning. But if you don't really understand content, if you don't understand the content that you're actually sharing, then you're kind of just making stuff up. And I always use this in the analogy of the jazz musician. The, the greatest jazz musicians in my mind um, have the ability to improvise. But the, the reason they have the ability to improvise and create is because they know the basics inside out. They didn't just play a trumpet and start doing stuff, right? So the, the idea of why I left out consumption is not because I don't think it's important, but creation is the end point. Do our students actually just get an information but, and then regurgitate or actually create something meaningful? Do they have that curiosity of the content? Do they actually make their own connections with this? And I think this is really um, the basis of the innovator's mindset. And when I try to go further than uh, Dweck, what Dweck was sharing with uh, growth mindset, I, I, I define innovator's mindset as this. Belief that abilities, intelligence, and talents are developed so they lead to the creation of new and better ideas. It's not just about being able to do math. It's actually doing something with the math you have learned, going that step further. And I shared this quote in the Innovator's Mindset from the Center for Accelerated Learning. I thought it was really, really powerful. I'll share it all with you. Uh, learning is creation, not consumption. Knowledge is not something a learner absorbs, but something a learner creates. Learning happens when a learner integrates new knowledge and skill into his or her existing structure of self. Learning is literally a matter of creating new meanings, new neural networks, and new patterns of electrochemical interactions with one, one's total brain body system. And so that idea of creating new meanings from content we consume is crucial. That's actually one of the things when I'm challenging with Heights book is kind of what am I taking from it? Do I just blindly say, yes, ban, ban phones, do this, or like, hey, like we got to kind of figure this out, you know? And the, the thing I'm struggling with is that when you ban anything, you eliminate. We talk about accessibility. We talk about, you know, really kind of multi-tiered support systems. So if you take certain devices away from the school because you make a blank, then is there some kid in your school who loses out on an opportunity because of that? Because they needed that. They had accessibility in a way they didn't have before. So we, we kind of say we're frustrated with some, even the majority, so we're gonna take this from everybody and then we hurt people along the way. I think we have to kind of figure out our own solutions. So I think when I, when I talk about this creation, I remember reading this uh, quote and I like I'm this is from memory so I don't know how valid this was or anything 
but it said something like 95% of people who spend their time online actually just consume information. Only 5% actually create. Now, I don't know the validity of that, but I think it's something to really think about in the context of our schools is most of our time in schools just consuming information or do we, do we actually create it? So for example, let's, one of the things I shared in Innovator's Mindset is deer time, drop everything and read. I think it's a great practice. I think it's really important to do. Kids have that independent reading time. But the thing I challenge is how much do they get to write? And so could we actually once or even twice a week, instead of spending 20 minutes for independent reading, do drop everything and reflect and actually share our learning that way and take some of the information we share. And one of the things I did is very simple. I created a Google form and I asked this question. I asked, what's your name? What did you learn this week? And anything else? And it's just one form at once a week, they fill it out and you can actually see their writing, their development over time and how their, their thinking creates. So it's not about ignoring consumption, but seeing creation as an endpoint. And so those are actually really important. And I, I share this in every mindset because this is something I've been an advocate forever. Consider how much deeper learning could be if creation was a non-negotiable in the learning for both us and our students. So I'm not asking you to have just your students create. I'm trying to model this myself by actually creating, sharing my learning um, with you all as well. And so this is the final statement I shared in the email. I thought it was kind of interesting. I tried to connect it, but let's see how it goes. I wrote this. Driven by curiosity, making connections, and ultimately creating something with this information will help me better understand my own thinking. Um, there's many things that I shared in this podcast that were written in the email, but there was also things that came to my mind as I'm talking these things out loud, which is why I wanted to do this. What will happen differently when I share this information and kind of break it down in a, a different medium? And that kind of just happened. So again, the three C's, let's see if I remember them without looking. Um, the first one is curiosity and really kind of asking questions and not just curiosity um, about content, but in information about other people. The next one is connection, not just um, connection with people across the world, but connection with people across the hallway, connection with content. And I think really importantly and is often ignored is connection with oneself. How can I actually add to a conversation if I, I don't actually have the time to really think about this. And then the last C, creation. That is not the ignoring consumption, but seeing creation as an endpoint. And you know, like there is no real endpoint in learning, but a goal that we continuously create and, and share our learning and make meaning out of it and then create something new to make our world a better place. So those are the three C's that I kind of collaborate or you know, try to consolidate into this space. Um, but I'd love to hear your thoughts and what kind of resonate with you, where you challenge this. But thanks so much for listening. I'm going to try to do some more of these based on some of my emails, just kind of talk them through. But you can also see the email, the original email. I'd love for you to subscribe to my email. Subscribe here on YouTube. Um, thanks for listening. I hope you have a wonderful day. Take care.